So I want to say thank you to Slimbook for sending me this device. Uh, this is a really cool machine. Uh, I'm very excited to be able to get my hands on it and to uh, take a moment and just put it through its paces. So here's our review of the Slimbook Titan. And I say our review because uh, my friend and my employee, Ethan, helped me uh, with this review. So thanks to Ethan for helping me. So the first impressions when unboxing this device were actually really good. The packaging was of high quality. The laptop was protected by plastic film and a cloth bag, uh, and it was encased in foam. So that's all really cool. In the box, we have the laptop, the power supply, a single page comprising the user manual, and a sticker. At first brush, I appreciate the lack of unnecessary documentation, but this proved a little obnoxious later. See, the owner's manual is concise. One page, black and white. Now, it would have been nice to have more information included in the owner's manual, such as how to get into the firmware, seeing as there are a lot of settings that can only be accessed in there. It was not obvious when booting up the device how to get into the UEFI, and honestly, I'm not exactly sure how I did. Uh, I tried hitting the delete key, it didn't work. I tried hitting the F2 key, that didn't seem to work. So uh, I just kind of mashed all the function buttons until the thing uh, booted into the UEFI. So yeah, it was a little bit obnoxious. So besides the lack of documentation in the box, we had the power supply, like I mentioned. It's got some weight to it, and the construction seems good, and the cables are heavy duty. Then there's the laptop itself, and it looks pretty nice. All black and silver branding. Mostly constructed out of aluminum, however, the bottom is made of plastic. But then you open the screen, and the company's name is positively enormous and distracting. It seems to me like the chassis was designed for a 16 by 10 screen, and then they just went with a 16 by 9 and decided to put their brand in there. Otherwise, why would this extra space be here, honestly? There's little to no flex in the body. It's not too thick and could easily be taken on the go in a backpack. There's plenty of ventilation around the sides, the back, and the bottom. The hinge for the lid feels strong and sturdy, and there is a performance mode switch next to the power button that allows the user to switch between three levels of performance. This machine boasts a Ryzen 9 5900HX processor along with the full spec GeForce RTX 3070 on its max TDP configuration. This machine came with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM and 500 gigabytes of solid state NVMe storage. There are several ports that are positioned on the back of the laptop. They are charging, RJ45, HDMI, and USB-C with DisplayPort. Although useful ports to have, placing them on the back could prove problematic and cumbersome. I know that there's got to be at least one person out there who likes having ports on the back of their laptop, but neither I nor Ethan are that kind of person, uh, and we don't appreciate having the ports on the back. There is a card reader and two USB 3.1 ports on the right side of the laptop, and on the left there is one USB 3.1 port and independent ports for audio and microphone. Having a separate jack for each is a nice addition. The screen is a 15.6 inch QHD 2560 by 1440 16 by 9 resolution at 165 hertz. And the display looks pretty good even at wider viewing angles. The screen glare is pretty low, however bright colors seem to be a little bit muted. The speakers are located underneath the laptop. This is a big problem in my opinion. Down firing speakers are easily muffled and easily muted and I'm just not a fan. The speakers are good quality though and when you're using it on a hard surface like a desktop, they sound good for most audio. The highs are a little tinny though, and the bass is lacking when compared to a designated audio solution, but overall, the sound is serviceable, what you would expect from a laptop. Now let's talk about the keyboard. They These are optomechanical RGB. This one seems to be great quality, honestly. There's not much play in the keys when in use. Responsiveness is good. The RGB backlight feature is a nice addition if only the software was working correctly and allowed the colors to be changed from the OS. Yeah, you can only adjust the style of the keyboard RGB from the BIOS. And it's not like a typical RGB keyboard with smooth and attractive RGB. It seems quite staccato. Uh, not a fan of the RGB on this machine, gonna be honest. But another pro of this keyboard is that it has a numpad. I don't like using keyboards that don't have a numpad and it's really useful to have it here. The trackpad is super responsive even at faster speeds. Uh, there's a spot in the upper left of the pad where it can be toggled on or off by pressing three times. Now, this is a useful feature. However, I feel it would be nice to have an indicator light for when the input is locked. 
Now there's air intakes from the bottom and exhaust from the sides. When being used at full potential, the laptop should be placed on a hard surface uh, so as to not block any airflow. Now under the hood, we have some real high quality hardware that should be capable of handling pretty much anything you throw at it. Using it plugged in rather than on battery will unlock the full performance. Now the battery life for any laptop differs greatly depending on usage. This laptop comes packed with some high powered hardware. When using it for activities like gaming, it would be beneficial to have it running on mains power when possible. When plugged in, some features are unlocked such as extra fan speed that are not available when running on battery. It's good to note that the manufacturer suggests running full charge cycles to maximize the life of the battery. Okay, so that's the hardware. Let's talk about about the software. The Slimbook boots in about 25 seconds from a cold boot. In terms of noise, there's no fan ramp up on start, and that's a good thing. I, I find that particularly obnoxious. Plus, the laptop is practically silent when idling. First time setup is fast and easy. A downside though is that the RGB keyboard does not light up until the laptop is reset for the first time, which Ethan and I both found kind of suspect. The Slimbook OS comes with additional software. Some of the software on offering could be useful. Others, such as Slimbook Face, facial recognition software, not so welcome. <laughs> The startup screen doesn't have any indication of how to enter the BIOS, like I said. Likewise, the user manual makes reference to changing settings throughout the BIOS, but it does not mention how to get there. Now, the Slimbook RGB keyboard software does not seem to work, and the RGB lighting did not change from the rainbow effect until we went into the BIOS and actually changed it. Now, Slimbook OS is a custom Linux distribution. It's based on Ubuntu, I believe. It's a good option for most users who are, want to just get going out of the box if they don't have a specific OS in mind. Now, that being said, does there really need to be a custom OS from every vendor? I'm not a fan of it. Truthfully, if I was holding onto this laptop for much longer, I probably would have installed Manjaro uh, or something like it. I'm just not a fan of uh, Ubuntu-based distros. Now, this is a high-end laptop that comes with some excellent hardware. Now, it seems like it would be better suited to be called a mobile workstation rather than a laptop. Uh, the best use case is when it's being used on a desk while plugged in. And as you can see from the performance numbers and the benchmarks we ran, the hardware here is more than capable of playing some truly high-end games. I mean, we played Doom Eternal, we played Shadow of the Tomb Raider, among other titles, and it was quite impressive. Mines. This is the true performance metric here. Yeah. We want to thank Slimbook for sending us this device to review and for their cooperation on the return policy after some extremely dumb mix-ups with UPS. But we want to know what you think. Have you had a chance to play with a Slimbook Titan? Sound off in the comments and let us know. Are there other devices you'd like to see us review? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to hit that like or dislike button. It lets us know if you're enjoying these videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. I want to give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help the show grow, you can join up with the 100 plus other Linux warriors with the links below and pledge your monthly support. It's all greatly appreciated. I think that's going to do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.